rapid camera and you can see the mix we're going to work with and the piece we're going to make we might have some bonus pieces later on if we've got time I'm going to be led by you today so drop me a little hello let me know that you are indeed there because as ever lovely little FB's not helping me by telling me anything which is always groovy so how are you my darlings are you well are you good and happy it seems that we are broadcasting we're up on the page but I cannot see comments never mind we're going to move on regardless so what's new with you tell me what you've been up to and I will catch up hello there we are Celia is in from a damp and muggy Lancashire and Jess is in from Colorado absolutely fabulous let's have a look Nebraska is represented today by Donna Lorraine is in from Braysan, I want to say, but I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And Debbie's just arrived. Kathy is in from Montana. It's absolutely divine to have your company. I'm just going to pop my silly little face up. Hello, how are you today? Are you having a beautiful day? I do hope so. What's the weather report? Are you hot? Is it chilly? Has it snowed? I don't know. Maybe it has. <laughs> it depends where you are, doesn't it? So what's new with you guys? Are you enjoying your beading at the moment? Our bead mix today is called Turquoise Trail. And oh my goodness, it's an absolute stunner. I love antiqued looking metals at the best of times. Turquoise is an incredible colour to work with with antiqued metals and the mix that we have in this bead blend of the turquoise tones as well as those antiqued colours absolutely gorgeous some real natural deserty feels in there as well so I'm going to pop back down to the board and we are going to unleash the beads let's have a ganderoo shall we so these are the ones that I've got left from my mix after making our featured piece today and what I thought we could do with is run through the techniques for this one and then maybe if we've got a little bit of time maybe you could give me a request let's have a look at those beads let's see who else has joined us hello from Gainesville Florida says Trish Donna says I'm so excited you're working with turquoise trail Kathleen Shelley Wales is in uh, Margaret says it's quite nice here Margaret is in from Edinburgh Robin has 99 degrees and humid in Tempe Good morning, Gem and friends. Good morning to you, my lovely. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. I'm sorry I can't see all of your comments at the same time. Betsy says, hi, also from Oregon. Joyce says, hello, Gem. Beautiful bead collection. I don't have it just yet. Dallas, Texas, only 90. Only 90. We'd all be a bit weak and weepy if it was 90, I'm afraid. Let's have a look at these beads, shall we? If I don't respond to your comments, I will look through afterwards and catch up with you. It's my pleasure to be with you and I do hope that you enjoy our tutorial today. So let's have a gander. This is what we're going to make first and foremost today. It's a jointed pendant. Lots and lots of movement and layering in different ways. Now obviously you can change that bead order to your heart's content but let's look at unleashing these beads. Anne says, uh, I can't actually see them. Love your tiara sitting on your table. Maybe a tutorial on them. There's part one is coming up tomorrow and part two will follow the next week. So let's have a gander. We've got this fabulous circular with square wire. And then I'm not sure what kind of technique this is. I'm not good with fabrics and the, and stitching and the such. It's very, very pretty. It looks a bit like lace work or tatting, maybe. Gorgeous, nonetheless. We're going to be using that today. So I might just keep that over there for now. It's a good one. Another piece that we're going to use today is this cow skull pendant with a flower on the front. Absolutely gorgeous really really lovely so let's pop that to one side as well you also get two of these absolutely heavenly divine verdigris discs now this reminds me actually of Boudicca's shield and I know that's nothing to do with the turquoise trail whatsoever but that's where my mind went they are stunning and I love those and I will be working with those very very soon you get one of these as well very very fancy highly detailed metal feather with a highlight of a stone in there and some more turquoise color gorgeous gorgeous i'm keeping that to one side because i'm going to make it into an earring later i might have got one in already can't promise can't deny 
So we've got some gorgeous little birdies. Now these are drilled through top to bottom. So pop them on a head pin, instant earring. Perfect. We have got some very, very flashy. Big octagon or emerald cut. With, well, with a step facet at least. There's uh, also the one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, is that pent? No, that's the next one up. It's a six sided one. Do you know what? My brain's super mushy at the moment super mushy brain that is actually what i'm going to change my name to i think gem super mushy brain hawks there's two of those as well i believe yep there's the other one you get a couple of the birdies this is also utterly stunning so you've got a drill hole through at the top there really really gorgeous very sturdy metallic as well if you didn't want to use the cow skull in today's tutorial you could absolutely swap it out for the flower and that would work just as well and look just as pretty there's gorgeous rhinestone with the milky opal colorway this feels like a ceramic i've got wood beads i've got ah oh, these are so cool i collect all of these and keep them together absolutely adore them it's such a cool mix i will catch up on your comments after today's live because they're not showing to me properly at the moment and that's very annoying but these kind of rippled beads that are very miraculous in their colorway i adore those Whee, it's almost like an optical effect you get a bunch of those then you've got a faux turquoise large hole now, when I started my business 12 years ago, it was to utilise lots of these in different ways. And one of the things I like to do with them, instead of popping them on a bearer chain, is to macrame around them and just use them as a single focal with satin on either side. Something like, something like that. A nice, jolly satin with lots of different colours in it. You've got so many metals in here as well. These are really, really cool spaces i suppose but those are absolutely gorgeous a gorgeous she says they're gorgeous there's more ceramics there's more wood oh these are fancy a briolette or briolet if it's not a true briolet because it's got a, a flattened bottom but it's that kind of idea you've got a couple of those they're super shiny there's that other octagon or emerald you've got these gorgeous really big substantial spaces those are so funky and your tribal inspired jewelry as well and there's loads more to boot let's have a quick rifle oh you got another one of those i thought you only got two you have the usual suspects i've got some bead caps i've got what looks to me like cork now i'm not an expert but it could be cork lovely really gorgeous to the touch actually really unusual to work with Ah, there's a fourth one. That makes sense. You get four of these. They're chonky enormous as well. Absolutely huge. So you've got a slightly smaller bead cap as well. As I love these. These are so cool. They're like washers. Really, really chunky metallic discs in a golden tone. And then you've got these cute little daisy spaces that are drilled through from side to side. So many bits and bobs to work with. There's another one of those birdies. So I'm not going to go through the whole lot today. Um, just wanted to give you a taste of turquoise trail if you've never seen it. These are absolutely startling. So let's just pop that over to one side for now. And let's put the beads we're going to work with into my dish so I can keep an eye on them. So what else do we need? Let's grab one of those spacers. And then I think we might work with one of those. Do you know what? I think we might work with a couple of those. Oh, I might grab them on the fly and change things up. Maybe that's an idea, isn't it? So let's have a slightly closer look at the piece we're going to make, which is this. Now, you don't have to do everything. When I bring you a technique or a tutorial, what I like to do is give you multiple techniques. So for instance, you could just go for this section, which is a jointed base of the pendant and then layering, which is really, really cool. You could have just a single bead up at the top before you add a loop to act as your bail. Lots of different ways that you can change this around. As I mentioned when we were looking through the bead mix, you could use the flower instead of the cattle skull if you prefer. Whichever way you want to go, it's absolutely up to you. So let's talk wire for a minute, shall we? I am working today with a copper colour, copper wire. So this is your medium temper or German style wire. I normally work with raw copper, but I have temporarily run out. Temporarily run out. OK, so let's just have a look at some of these scraps of copper wire. This is 18 gauge. 
and I've got a couple of lengths which I think are probably going to be substantial enough for what we want. This one is about five or six inches and this one's just a little bit shorter and honestly that's all we're going to need for our tutorial today. I promise I will catch up on comments after today's show has finished up and we will uh, hash out any questions at that point. Uh, if there's anything urgent I will click over to see if I can find the comments a little bit later on. So let's start with the basics shall we? So the basic is a bar drop. So at the top we've got a nice wrapped loop, nice and strong, and at the bottom we've got a simple loop. What you may notice or you might not be able to see is that simple loop is super shiny and that's because I've work hardened it by smashing it with pliers. You could use a hammer and a block if you prefer but I prefer the plier method because it means that I tend to not over harden and weaken wire. So let's choose some beads to go on the bar drop section doesn't have to be exactly the same as what I've ordered. In fact, let's be rebellious and change it up. I might still use one of those because it's pretty cool. Let's see what else is in there. Why don't we go for wood? I think wood would be nice. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. I'm very sorry. I'm hopeless with puns. So let's grab some beads to work with. I think maybe a wooden one at either end. And then let's see, change things up and grab a metallic. Instead of going for the antique colour bead caps, what I might do is use one of those golden, almost like, um, gosh, I know them as washers. I don't know if there's a different term. They're almost like a washer spacer. So I'll have one of those at either end and that's going to form our bead bar drop or bar drop, however you want to think of it. So what I'm going to do is start down at the bottom. Now it's quite a large loop that we're going to create. Bit of a large loop. And that is because I want it to be easy to go through this woven piece. I don't know if it's tatting or lace or what it is. I'm not clever with um, fabric crafts, I'm afraid. So let's just grab those over as well. Just put them up at the top there. Making sure that your wire is warm and smooth and straight to begin with is a key element of any wire work design. So let's grab a hold of one end. And again, this is about six inches or so, maybe just slightly longer. We certainly won't need all of it, but let's work with this anyway. So what I want to do, actually, I think I'll start with the wrapped loop. Let's rebel. So if you don't have access to a bale making plier, very handy thing to have incidentally, but if you don't have access to a bale maker, what we're going to do is come about an inch and a half from the end of your length of wire, put a really good sharp bend in. I'm going to make my loop today with round nose pliers, but because I want a large loop, I want to show you how it's possible to create a loop that's larger than the largest size on your round nose pliers because if you've left your bale maker somewhere else or you don't have any yet let's get this wire nice and warm let's put some heat into that and then what we're going to do is come slightly further away from that bend than we would normally do and start rotating that plier around and what I'm doing is I'm causing it to bend but I'm not using the actual plier itself hopefully you can see there's a big old gap down here big old gap and then I'm going to draw the tail of that wire across the top. So I have used the roundness of my round nose pliers to create this part but with a gentle touch you can create a loop that's much larger than the space at the bottom of your round nose pliers. So it's just about having a little control, practice on your scraps of wire or do feel free to invest in some bale making pliers. Honestly very well worth it. So I'm just going to make sure that the tail of wire, this is the core wire that will go down the centre of our beads is nice and straight and then I'm going to support the shape up at the top and I'm just going to draw that tail around. Now what we want to do is keep that tail travelling as close to the angle we made as possible and just tighten that up ever so slightly. I cannot currently see any comments so I'm assuming that you're all there and I will catch up on your comments later. Please don't think I'm ignoring you. I am not that type. So what I'm going to do is show you a two plier technique for creating a really neat coil near the top of your pendant neck. So I'm going to very very carefully and slowly move that tail around 
using the flat surfaces of my pliers. Now I'm using one chain nose and one bent chain nose set of pliers each. You could use both exactly the same. As long as they've got flat faces, it does not matter. The key with this technique is that we're always using very, very tiny movements. Sometimes it's tricky to get this nice and tidy closing up by hand. If you've got a short tail of wire to work with, you can use your tools to help you make that neat and tidy. If you do end up with a little bit of a gap up at the top, what we're going to do is support the loop and very carefully just draw this up to the top, just like so, until that sits a little bit neater. I've slightly wonkened, that's not an expression, I've slightly made wonky the core wire, so I'm just going to straighten that slightly, very, very gently opening and closing those pliers on that core wire, just to make that neat and tidy. And I'm just going to draw that coil up to the top so it's super neat. Let's add our chosen beads for that section of the pendant, shall we? This is right up at the top. As I mentioned earlier, you could put as few as one beads on, one beads? One bead. <laughs> My brain, it's a mushy brain. And I think we'll just go for this order today. These wooden beads are gorgeous. I adore working with natural products and materials. Just as much as I like working with these very, very cool metallics, it's great to have some naturals in there as well. So in order for me to make a large, simple loop down at the bottom, I'm going to need to make sure that my large, simple loop is in the same orientation as the loop at the top. And that is because when I put this on a pendant necklace holder, whatever it is, you're going to want this to look forwards. If you put the loops at 90 degrees to one another, it's going to sit like that. And that does not look comfy. So I don't fancy that myself. So what we're going to do is pick the prettiest side of our wrapped loop up at the top. And I think that's the prettiest side. And I'm going to push my pliers against the lowest bead. One of the reasons I like to use a metallic as an up and down most bead is it means I can put just a little bit extra pressure, not very much, just a little extra pressure against that metallic than I would if it were a crystal or a gemstone. So I'm going to push those pliers up against the metallic bead and pull forwards. So if I drop that sideways down, we're seeing it sideways, which is just to explain um, why we're doing the loop in that orientation. Now, what will happen, because I've chosen a uh, washer, <laughs> forgot the word for a hot minute then, I've chosen a washer style bead down at the base, is it may just come down that section for a moment. So if that happens to you, you have the opportunity to change it or just make that angle slightly more strong. So for this next section, it does need to be a really good size loop. So you can still do this in exactly the same way we did the one at the top using round nose pliers, or you could use a very slender pencil, a round form. I've actually got a really skinny pen just here. You may recognize this guy. <laughs> it's Totoro. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is use the pen that Totoro exists on, or Totoro. Maybe that's a better pronunciation. I'm going to wrap that all the way around because it's a nice, smooth surface and it's a very regular surface. You don't have to have specialist tools, but sometimes you need a really good shape. So you've got two opportunities, two different ways that you can make those circular forms. That's just slightly larger. Now what we're going to do is trim away with the flush cutters at the point that the tail of wire crosses over the angle. We're currently working with 18 gauge. That's a comment I can see. So I'm going to just snip with the flush side of the cutters. That's going in the scrap pot for reuse later. And what we're going to do is make sure that that loop touches the angle. The tail that we just cut touches the angle. So I'm just going to take a second to make sure that that sits neatly against. And then I'm going to open and close my pliers quite strongly on that flattened loop shape. Now you may notice that you can get quite a lot of strength behind this. It is still my preference to work hard on a simple loop in this fashion because it means that you, it's really very difficult to over harden it. I don't know if you can see on camera, but I've changed the shape of the wire. It's no longer round. It's now more oval to flat, which is great because I want this loop to be good and strong. I don't want it to come undone. So I'm just making sure that that's all good and strong. And what we're going to do is just make sure that that does indeed meet at the back. You can give it a very gentle wiggle. And then we're going to open and close it as if it's a jump ring. 
like so. And then because we said this was the prettiest side of the wrapped loop up at the top, we're going to make sure that we load the thing that's visible first on first. So in this case, the cow skull sits at the front and then you can choose the orientation however this works best for you. I don't think they're fronted or backed. So I'm just going to slide that on in a good position. The cow has decided to uh, interact with the woven section because obviously why wouldn't you, it's live. And then we're just going to close up. Let me just hold that out of the way for a second so you can see the gap. We're just going to close that gap back up and hopefully that will also stop that pesky disc spacer from moving anywhere else. So that's our first section of the tutorial done and dusted. Really easy, but it makes a heck of a difference having mobility in jewellery. It's interesting and exciting, dynamic. So that's the first part. The second part is just creating a hanger. And it is so easy to do that it's something you can add onto all of your designs. So let's just pop those up to the corner for a second. What we're going to do is take another scrap length of wire. So we are being super, super thrifty. I am using scraps of copper colour copper wire. So this is a non-tarnish coated medium temper, but I'm making it super floopy, super warm like so. Now for the next section, you could use a chunky marker pen, a torch or a mandrel if you have one. What we're looking for is a nice, smooth arcing shape whichever diameter you see fit. So I'm just going to put that wire over the top of my round form and draw those two tails back together. Now, because I'm working with, this is about a five inch scrap length, we've got plenty. There's no need to worry about getting that centralized. And what I'm going to do is now open that back out and just try it for size. I want it to sit just slightly narrower than that woven or fabric pendant. So I'm just going to draw that in until I'm happy with that curvature. That looks good to me. You could have it a super long drop with loads of beads on, or like I did with this one, you could have it slightly shorter. What you will need to look out for is if you have a very large bead at the bottom, you need to maybe drop it down so it doesn't interact too much with your cattle skull. So let's pick some beads. Let's have a look at what we've got. I wonder. Now, one thing I will say, when you're working with crystals on a curved wire, as the wire curves, the whole of the bead, it's the distance between the one edge of the wire and the other edge of the wire, because you're going across at an angle, is actually greater than one millimetre. So it can be that you need to work with slightly larger hole beads for a curved design. So this one fits really perfectly and smoothly. And I think these will probably also work really nicely. This is a resin or an acetate. What you'll notice is it's got stuck. And the reason it's got stuck is because as the wire curves round, uh, the bead hole actually experiences a larger wire surface. I know that sounds very sciencey, but all you have to do is just take it back off and try a different one. That one has become snagged also. So I know that these ones uh, let's have a gander. That one just sits a little bit high. So that would be why there are metal spacers here because they have a larger drill hole. So the other option, if you really wanted to use specific beads and they don't go past that curved section, uh, what you would need to do is maybe use a slightly lighter wire. So it's absolutely up to you, whichever way you do it. I think that will be too, that's not going to work on the corner, is it? So let's have a gander and see what we've got next. Maybe one of these teeny tiny little floral spacer beads. We'll see if that works because they're so digi. Digi is not a word. Let's find another one. It went on. I liked it. Yeah, I know I am aware that I do come out with some absolute rot, some words that really aren't words. And I'm very sorry about that, but I'm, I'm also kind of not sorry. Let's add another one of these. I think we've got some spares. I love the color of these. They're such a high gloss really really high gloss beads and they work really beautifully when you're also having antique beads i like to mix and match my metals so let's take our pendant and line it up and just pop this over the surface now so that this doesn't interact with the cattle skull bead we're either going to have some naked wire which is fine or we could add another couple of beads we're at the straight part now so we could probably use a different type of bead here so let's pop one of those on either side and just keep trying it and see what it looks like. 
the beads work fine size wise but I'm not sure I want those on there I think I want these because they're so very very fancy yeah like a disco ball bead but not the shiny ones a really you know the ones that spin around and uh, they, they look a bit like an optical illusion that kind of disco ball so at this stage you can close that up and open it up a little bit if you have crystals on a curved section of wire please do not do the opening and closing because you may shatter the beads I'm working here with possibly an acrylic lots of metal and a very large hole ceramic there is no risk with these beads okay so just think about which beads you're going to use for a design like that so let's hold them over the surface of that main metal section that really works for me I like that so what I'm going to do is ensure that all of my beads are sat centrally and equally and then I'm going to put my bent chain nose pliers over the front making sure that they are indeed equally spaced I've got to push back on one side Whoop. I knew that was going to happen so I'm going to push back and give a really good solid right angle like so and then I will need to do the same on the other side but because those beads are still fluid you'll need to make sure that everything is even before you push that bend on how am I going to do this without going left-handed I don't know if I can let's do it upside down instead then okay that looks pretty even to me might be slightly higher on this side actually so we can just take a tiny tiny nibble down there so those two angles are coming back and away let's get that nice and straight we will need that to be super straight because it's got to go through a small gap in the large disc if you're just joining me now I can't currently see comments I will catch up with them as soon as I can in a second and I might if I can see enough comments I'll be doing a request for you today so let's have a look and see where we can find a space so because I want the cow skull or the cattle skull to sit centrally on the woven disc I'm going to pinch that quite firmly now the reason I can pinch it firmly is because the metallic horns on the skull go over the top of the metal element of this design if that is going to go through I couldn't pinch it too hard because I might disrupt where the fabric sits so what I'm going to do is find equal spaces for those wires to poke through and once I'm happy with that I think that that will hang quite nicely once it's on I think that works I'm going to pull that assembly back out of the main piece and we're going to trim away some of this wire so what I might do is just straighten up these angles at the front get that nice and neat and tidy before we go any further they were a little bit soft those angles and I'd quite like them to be just a tiny bit firmer and then we're going to trim away and create some loops so I'm probably going to trim to about this must be a, just larger than a quarter of an inch I have to try and think of it in um, imperial rather than metric and my brain hurts today so so just trying to get those two trim lengths to around about a quarter of an inch and equal to each other at the very least let's get that scrap out of the way we're then going to turn to our round nose pliers to create a small loop shape and we're only going to do the first half of a loop so you can see I'm crooking that over like a walking stick head I'll do the same on the other side they do need to be straight though so you shouldn't be able to see anything behind the other the reason I'm doing it in stages is because we ne now need to get that back through the woven element so let's move the cattle head back out of the way just hook these two sections through down at the bottom so you can see they're hooked into position and then if I flip that over all you need to do is close those loops up Now we just need to make sure that this is comfortable so what I will do if I turn that sideways get it over a light part of the board that's probably the best position I'm just going to turn that end in very carefully very small movements just pressing that against my finger any pushing is being absorbed by my non-dominant forefinger it's not being absorbed by the bead or the um, assembly with the fabric on it so again I'm just going to take the very very tip there I'm going to push it firmly back and over the top of the wire that sits in front of it if I turn this to the front you should see that that now sits invisibly suspended so that is our main segment today what I'd like to do is wake my mouse up for one thing hello I'm still here 
Hello, how are you? What I'd like to do is just see if I can get the comments to pop up now so I can catch up with any questions that you might have. If I hit refresh enough, maybe, just maybe. Oh no, it's completely gone now. It doesn't like working at all. Here we go. So I can see the last four comments saying, happy Saturday, good morning from Alaska. Good morning, Paula. And Margaret's being lovely. That's good. So I can see the last couple of comments. Is there anything you'd like to see me do as a quick make now with Turquoise Trail? I'm thrumming it open to you as much as I can see the comments. I'm going to pop you back down to the board and spill the beads out. That's our main feature pendant for the today. So you've got a couple of techniques in there, a couple of techniques to run with, including the jointed nature really does make a difference to your jewellery. Let's just pop some of these down and have a look. Is there anything you fancy me doing with any of these particular components before I head off for, well, it's evening in England. It's gone half five over here. I appreciate it's quite early in California still, but uh, so those are some of our choices. Is there anything you would like me to do today uh, with any of these? Let's see if anybody has any requests. I'm glad that you're liking the um, tutorial today, Margaret. It's lovely to have your company. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just going to stick my little face up here for a second. I am all happy to see you. Really, really lovely to work with you. If you are based in the US or Canada, you can get free posts today and tomorrow until the 1st of August if you are purchasing the... Jesse James Beads Summer Camp 2022 kit. So free post for US and Canada, which is lovely. So uh, do check that out. If you are in the rest of the world, put Gem 10, that's Juliet Echo Mike 10 in at checkout and you'll get $10 off. $10 off the price for your entire week's work, which is 10 complete classes. Now I've seen the kit. The kit's amazing. Absolutely outstanding. There's a full stamping kit in there, which I must say I'm really looking forward to. So let's have a look. The large hull turquoise. I would like to make earrings with the steer charm. Do I need to buy two kits or can I buy that charm extra? Right, okay, that I don't know, my love. You do only get one in there, but if you head over to the website, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to just do a, a cattle charm search and see if that pops up. If not, you can always put in a request and see if there are any available from other people who've bought the mix. Maybe they want to do the feather instead. You could do swapses with friends. So I have got one feather in my ear right now, which I absolutely love really really simple earring finding open the earring finding put the feather on <coughs> cracking i love making jewelry that's instant so i'm lucky enough to have two of these mixes so i will be making the other earring momentarily uh, let's have a gander uh, i am from california moved to missouri i saved your class so i can watch the whole thing good plan angel thank you for being here Shaquisha Zen, just enjoying you making anything you do is beautiful and amazing. Large whole turquoise. Okay, let's pop back down to the board and look at that bead. Here we go. So the large whole turquoise. Now, macrame is not my main function. I like wire. Wire likes me. Well, for the most part, sometimes it just, as you can probably tell by my arms, it just doesn't like me very much. And then I end up wearing more of it than I want. Um, this is going to be an earring in just a second. If you've never used a pre-made earring finding, hey, it's super easy. You see this loop here? You can either use a jump ring or you can just open it sideways like a jump ring. Pop your charm into position. Make sure the bead slides back up. Some of them come with beads, some of them don't. And then close that back up. I like jewellery that I can make in, what was that, seven seconds? That's going in my ear in a second. I'm very, very lucky to have two of those. Thank you very much. So the large whole turquoise. What I would say is let's grab some of that satin that I have over to one side. I've had this in my stock for about 12 years. And I would just... Um, literally use probably two strands through the center of these because they are very 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 large holes indeed so you could use a faux leather or something similar or size up your satin and then i would do a very simple square knot either side 
And for me, when I'm making bracelets, I use a length of fabric for the macrame section, either side of that single large hole bead, the same length as the person is tall. So I tend to just do a complete wingspan and then weave from top to bottom and then just a single knot around the central bead and I have sold bajillions of those over the years not necessarily all in this funky uh, red thread another thing that you can do with these is a beautiful lark's head knot and just wear them instantly I think they're incredibly cool a lark's head knot is very very simple if you've never seen a lark's head knot but you're all beaders I'm sure that you have Let's see, probably the best thing to demonstrate is this piece. So if you're going to do a lark's head knot, make sure that you have plenty of excess thread. So for an 18 inch necklace, I would probably allow about 28 inches. And the reason is that I want to do some knotting at the end. So I found the halfway point on my 28 inch piece of thread, poke the halfway point through, open up that hole, and then draw both tails through like so and then if you're just going to sell a piece like that I actually think it's really really charming uh, just to have a bead like so and then you can do a sliding knot at the other end so a sliding knot is really hard for me to explain because I'm not a threader by nature but I'm going to make a little loop shape here I'm going to bring a tail from the other side and then I'm going to choose the downmost, which is part of the left hand side that's threaded around. Let me just put that down on the board so you can see what's happening. Obviously this will be much longer if it's a necklace. So you've got the right hand thread is sitting in the middle, you've got the left hand thread looping around. What I'm going to do then is allow that loop to stay large. I'm going to take the left hand thread might just need to tighten this up slightly and wrap that around everything twice before poking that tail through the loop and tightening everything up you then have a knot that should move up and down you'll need to do the exact same thing in the opposite direction but I'm not going to do that because I'm absolutely hopeless at demonstrating a sliding knot you got it once we got lucky it worked so that's the simplest thing that you can do with your large hole bead um, square knotting macrame let's just pop you up to here for a sec on my YouTube channel I do have one video demonstrating macrame square knot and spiral knot I am the first to admit macrame is not my natural home I'm not the best at it I love working with wire that's my medium um, but if you need to find out how to do a square knot video it's super simple just hop over to YouTube check out Gem Hawk's channel and you'll find a way to do it on there in terms of instant earrings we could grab a couple of fancy beads and do something right now couldn't we let's use those octagon let's pop back down and choose some beads and do a quick pair of earrings I think there we go let's do a quick pair of earrings so have you got some scrap wire I know I have this is copper color this one is 18 gauge now I'm not sure if this is going to go through because I haven't tried these beads just yet let's have a look let's have a look super 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 warm the wire make sure that you've got a good flush cut on the end make sure that you police your off cuts let's try that through the bead it does work now any time I'm working with a crystal or a gemstone I am super vigilant to make sure that I am gentle with how my wire acts through the hole in that bead if I was to suddenly bend the wire and deform it round I stand the risk of damaging my bead and I don't want to do that they're far too pretty so I now know that my bead goes on nicely it's actually moving quite freely so let's slide that back off for a second what we're going to do is a gorgeous little heart shape so why don't we make our first start on a coil so I've made it a small round shape or a half round shape to begin with bring that all the way around small movements and I've got myself a circular form now it's slightly elevated if I turn that it might go squishy on the camera but if I turn it you'll see that that's elevated so I need to make sure that that's nice and flat so let's just get that moving perfect that's exactly what I wanted it to do so I'm now going to warm that through just make sure I'm happy with that if I imagine that this is the first half of my heart I'm going to pop my pliers underneath put a sharp bend up the side and then draw that out so the angles are equal on both sides 
I'm then going to put some extra heat. I know I'm boring. Extra heat in the wire. Put some heat in the wire. Hey, how about we put some heat in the wire? And then I'm going to put my pliers in and just rotate gently until I get the start of a circular form that sits opposite the first lobe on my heart. So that looks reasonably similar distance from the point to the top of the lobe. Might be slightly larger though, so I might just make that a tiny bit smaller and then draw the two sides in just a little bit. When I'm happy that those two sides are reasonably equal, I'm going to turn it upside down, pop the tip of my pliers in and draw the wire sharply up the centre. And what we have now is a heart at the end of a wire. Now you can, if you want to, solder those two pieces together. You can, if you want to, wrap some very fine wire around those two pieces. What I would do is make sure that my end coming away, the core wire is straight, make sure that I'm happy with it and then smush the wire. Everything needs to be flat as if it's between two panes of glass. You can hammer that gently if you want to. In fact, in a design like this, it's not a bad idea to hammer it. We want this shape to stay nice and strong. And then all I would do is add on one of my octagon beads. I know that they fit on the wire now. And just allow that to sit over the top. Might not actually be the best bead for the job. Let's choose something else. How about one of these? It's almost a sage colour. Oh, that's really pretty. That works for me better, actually. I like that one. So then all I would do is wrap a simple loop up at the top. I'm going to push the wire forwards like so. Pop my pliers in. Now you'll see that there's a gap between the angle and the top of the bead. That's me protecting my beads. I'm very protective of them. Draw the wire all the way around. Yes, we've made our 965th consecutive simple loop together. Give that a really firm squeeze. I'm happy with this, the size and shape of it. It's easier to give that a bit of a squeeze while it's still attached to the tail. Trim the tail away at the point that the line crosses over that angle that we made. And then we're just going to give that one last smush to make sure it's perfectly flat and you've got instant earrings again and you didn't have to do overly much. Well, Facebook's being tricky, can't see the comments anymore, so that's all good. I'm going to log out of my broadcasting software and reboot the book of face and then i will catch up with any comments and questions that you might have then from me to you lots of love all hearts and i'll be back next week lots and lots of love see you soon